Hi, Peter. Hi, Josette. Hi. I'm here with my dear friend, Peter. Now, how do you pronounce your last name? Because Sebastian and I were, were differing on this yesterday. I said yeah, Mathis, and he said Mateis. <laughs> but of course, he has his accent, so. Yes, I think I do Matis. 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 I love that, OK. So, and of course, you and I have been very good friends. Peter Matis is uh, the founder of the Conscious Business Institute. You had me at Conscious. Um, and you are a former venture capitalist. Is that true? So you came from the corporate world to try and bridge the corporate world with what? Tell me, tell me what you do. What do you do, Peter? Yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to figure that one out. <laughs> But I can tell you what I did not want to do anymore, and that was business as usual. <laughs> because uh, running my own company before being a venture capitalist and working with Anderson Consulting, before that, I saw that most companies, uh, most people don't like what they're doing. And if you would just give them the opportunity to earn money in a different way, way to be out of the door tomorrow. Uh, I was one of them, by the way. And so um, as a venture capitalist, uh, we invested in a ton of companies and I sat on boards. And so I saw hundreds of organizations and I saw the same pitfalls, the same uh, breakdowns, the same dissatisfactions, the same overwork over and over again. And said, this is not a healthy way to run organizations and it's not going to be healthy going forward if we plunder the planet the way we do and it's not going to be sustainable for ourselves if we don't work with fulfillment and purpose and so in 2003 i gathered all my courage and i broke away from it and i left everything behind my wife at that time my home country my stellar career and came to santa barbara to start from scratch and to find a way to build better organizations what a shift. So let, it, let me ask you a question. When you said that you saw the same thing in all these organizations, was it basically with the employees or was it with the, the big heads, the big corporate heads, or was it just integrated in, in all parts of these corporations? In, in all, it's on, on three levels that I usually say. It's on a personal level that we overwork and that we're dissatisfied. Like if you look at the engagement statistics, very few people are engaged and fulfilled, they do. So on a personal level, it's, it's dissatisfying and not doing us a service, really. On a business level, it's not working because if you look at all the breakdowns that happen in organizations, they're happening on a people level. It's not about business, it's about people. So the way we relate to each other, the way we lead organizations is not working anymore. And then on a global level, it's not working anymore either because it's just not sustainable the way we operate. So what's the solution? What's the conscious? What do you strive to do when you dig in there? What do you do? Yeah, so one important thing to realize is it's not about doing something different. Um, and I've thought about it a long time um, because doing something different is doing something different with the same mindset, which creates the same problems just in a different way. So it's not about a change. It's not something that we actually change. Uh, it is a transformation and a transformation requires a shift in consciousness. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example. When you look back at the times of Copernicus, he was one of the first guys who says the earth was round and everybody thought he was a little wacko at that time. Um, that was one single shift in thinking uh, that's changed everything. If you look at um, Columbus, he set sail to find East India westwards which would not have been possible if the earth was flat everybody would say you, you need to go eastward to find east india so this single shift in thinking opened up a completely different world that was not possible before that was not conceivable before so that's why we consciousness is such a critical part if we want to move forward in a different way than we have walked so far and it's interesting at this moment that we're talking about it because there's so much polarity and people taking all of these ideas of consciousness and different perspectives and many of them, the narrative is slamming them down right now. But it is in fact, it's history. It's the way things have always been. People who have come with new ideas have always been slammed down in the beginning. But how do you, how do you ignite transformation? in other people because you can come with this idea to these companies but how do you inspire people to want to transform um 
there, if, if you look at research against um, Stanford researchers, that there are really three ways we can ignite transformation. The first one is through uh, a critical situation. For example, 9-11, when a plane, you had a critical yeah, situation yeah. <laughs> with your life, yeah, you had awesome. to change. Right. Uh, I know people who were living really happily in the Twin Towers and they got away with their lives in, in 2001, but they changed their entire lives. They quit their careers, they quit their marriages because they said, you know, out. So we can hit with a, be hit with a sledgehammer to transform. That's one way. Probably not the best way to do it if we can not avoid it. Fun, no. Yeah. By the way, we are being hit with a sledgehammer these days with COVID. So I see, I've seen it from the beginning, and I and I I find myself because the feeling is similar that I I've woken up in the middle of the night and I've, got, I've been here before. I know this feeling of having the world getting taken out from under you and feeling like everything's falling apart. And half of me wants to celebrate because I know what's on the other side, but then I go, oh crap, because I know we have to get to the other side first. And that's yeah. the hard part. But so you've oh, been heck, through this yeah. transition yourself with your with your body and, and know that it's extremely hard. Yeah. You know, and painful. But no now being on the other side of it, you, you're grateful for the journey, probably, huh? for parts of it. <laughs> for sure, and you as well. I mean, you hit a big shift as well. I think, yeah, those of us who have already done, unfortunately, the dark night of the soul, or fortunately, see, I don't, I never know which way to put it because it would be great if we could just present these concepts and have everyone accept them for their own truth so that it resonates with their own heart and then they go on to lead abundance and joy and I think honestly I think that's where it's all heading um yeah I mean that's maybe we can dive into that before we go into the other ways to shift uh to transform because I think it's an important point that we're making our, our tendency in our brains is that we want to have security so either this is very terrible and we have to fight it or we have to make a nice story around it and this is a fantasy and everything's going to be beautiful after that it's not it's not. This is a transformation and it's messy and it's it's not going to be easy tomorrow. And there will be so much more stuff hitting the fan. Um, and if we just fantasize about, oh, this is all going to be fancy and nice, I think we're setting us up for a big disappointment. So the question is more for me, how can we flow with these changes and challenges in a healthy way as human beings, instead of going into fantasy land and say, oh, this is all so fantastic and oh, this is so bad. Whew, but yeah. that takes courage. It takes yes. courage and an awareness of that's where we're at because I think there's so many people that are really still just, when is this going to be over so I can get back? And we're not going back. It's it, it, At some point, we're going to look at this as it's all going to be in the rearview mirror, but it's because we hit a transformation or we transformed. Yeah. Yeah, a friend of mine just did an interview with one of the leading uh, neuroscientists. I'm pointing back because it's in Europe. <laughs> Over there. Wait, yeah, with the leading <laughs> neuroscience and scientists. And what he says is, which I find very important for us to, to realize, is that our brain constantly scans for what's familiar for us. Mm. Even if, if pressure and unhappiness and all those kind of things seem familiar, we are, we are going back to it. So there are so many people who want to go back to the old work world, which they hated six months ago. Like the stress, the overwork, unfulfillment, I'd rather have that than what we have now. And we have to really examine that because um, it's our brain telling us, can we please go back to safety? It's our, our brain is constantly searching for safety and something that's familiar. And if, if we don't have that, it's as though we are constantly scanning and it, it drains our energy and it burns us out. It literally burns us out. I got a call two days ago from somebody at a large uh, company that we work with and she can't sleep anymore. She just says, I have a real problem. I can't sleep anymore. I just, my brain is constantly on. So um, we have to be aware that... Um, there is no security out there. There's nothing familiar out there. And can we stand in the fire and not want to go back to the old ways, which mightn't have served us? And then the whole question becomes, how can we come together around that? What, how can we grow as individuals to hold that space? And how can we come together to support each other in that? And, how, we, and, I, and I love that question because then that invites 
the creativity and the envisioning and how do you create what you're going towards, right? I mean, yeah. for me, when I was sick, a lot of my healing was envisioning, I was being pulled by a greater vision. I was being pulled by possibility or what could be. And when I, when I steeped and I really focused and I, and I had that pointed focus in vision for me, um, I was able to be, get pulled by it. So how, how do you do that? How do you get together and, and transform together? Yeah, I think, I think you're saying it. Um, it's, it's through the possibility that we can create. Mm -hmm. yeah, we can either focus on the things that are not working. You see that a lot in the media. You see that a lot in the activism that's happening around there. This is not working. This is not good enough. Government is bad. All these kind of things. COVID, whatever. Or we can focus on what's possible. And as you say, your, your vision of what could be, I could be strong, healthy, I don't know, all those kind of things gave you so much power that you're actually pulling through. As Nietzsche says, if you have a strong why, you can bear, bear, bear almost any how. So if we can create a vision together of what we want to create as an educational system, as a government system, how we want to live our lives in, in wholesomeness and fulfillment, how we want to communicate with each other, uh, with our families, maybe. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, how we want to build businesses. If we can create a common vision, that can, that can pull us into new places. And that's how we actually work with organizations. We get the board and actually the entire team together to create this new vision together. And then they can say, wow, how do we make this work? And suddenly there's an energy that's, that's, that's incredible to see you that develops in the company. And do you um, inspire companies to create impact in their community? Is that what you're doing? Or is it just impact within the, the organization itself? No, no, it's beyond the organization. We we develop their why as a part of it, their purpose. And one of the biggest things of the purpose is that it needs to be on the self. It's not about us. It's not about making money. It's not about being the best. It's about what is my service to humanity. So we don't develop that. They come up with it with it themselves. And when we lead them there, there's always a, an aspect of serving the community in there. I got it. Because so that's, that's what we... Yeah, we are inspired to do that. We all take the same way. We all want to make a contribution. And it just shifts the vision and the perspective from me to we, which is what I think this shift is all about, isn't it? Yeah. Because we can no longer continue, as you said previously, in the way things are going because most of the people are miserable. Yeah, and and... I want to emphasize that again, if we really look at it, we've lived, we've lived a life that's been driven by greed, that's been driven by ego, that's been driven by materialism, that's been driven by stress, that's been driven by overwork, that's been driven by injustice. All of these things we said, we are okay with it. Let's live with that. And so the question that we need to ask is, do we really want to go back to that as a humanity or can we really try to break that away and, and create more connection with each other and create a world where we support each other, where there's, where there's oneness maybe at some point in time. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's so funny that all of this is happening and I know you've been doing this for a while. How long have you been doing this now? Um, I started in 1996, but I founded the Conscious Business Institute in 2005, so 15 wow. years ago long time because right now seems to be it it seems to be the point that everybody is going to i mean i, I just looking locally where you and i are both in santa barbara to to see our restaurants and our small businesses it, to me is unconscionable what's happening to them that they're being shut down and not given a lifeline um you being a business owner me being a business owner it's um it's to me, that's so indicative of what needs to change. We can't, we have to support each other. There, there should be abundance for all, right? And that's just one small piece. So let me ask you, how is it that you have changed and the way you conduct business? Has it changed at all since March? Yes. 
And that's that's something I have all, all the listeners, I would encourage you to do that because usually we just potter along, we we think nothing has changed, but think back eight months since since this entire thing started and really look at how you have changed. Mm -hmm. And you will find that there are many things that happen inside of you, maybe some that your body was was chiming or something was reminding you of something, but there were a lot of changes. And I really would like you to to acknowledge that for a moment because there are a ton of changes that happen for me. Um, honestly, there's just been a lot of rubbish that has been thrown into my face. My own rubbish of, um, I have a tendency to overwork. I have a tendency to take on too much stuff. I have a tendency when I do that, then to cut people short and not to call them back or because I'm in busy mode and that is alienating. It's not how I want to live. And it's been thrown into my face. Yeah, it's caused frustration, it's caused breakdowns and, and it, it forced me to actually sit with this. And it, honestly, it also gave me the time because COVID is a time for us to slow down if you look at Mother Nature's message. It's a time for us to slow down and actually examine those things that maybe we criticize in the system that we practice ourselves and maybe break away from those and just take the time, yeah. It has been, uh, it's funny, I was listening to Dr. Christian Northrup doing a interview yesterday and somebody had asked her, you know, you're getting slammed right and left and because she's come out and really spoken up and um, she had said, you know, my whole life, I'm board, triple board certified. I've been on Oprah, I've been on Dr. Oz, I've been, you know, hailed as this a genius author and doctor. And she said, COVID reminded me of why I was born. She said, everything that I had done up until now was the preparation for me to step in and speak truth. And she said, right now, the hardest thing in the world to do is to speak your truth. Even if you're shaken while you're doing it, you have to speak it. And I know that a lot of people have kind of awoken up. Can, I mean, I, for me, I've discovered more about myself, where I wanna go, how I wanna be, how I wanna show up and who, who I really am, as you mentioned with COVID, it's shifted everything. Mm -hmm. um, how is it that you see things going forward? I mean, none of us have a crystal ball, but how, how, do you, how were you taking step-by-step step now? in the transformation process. Yeah, maybe I have a, have a little different view of, of things. I see COVID as, as you probably do as well as a catalyst. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a blink of, of history that's gonna vanish in a, in a blink of an eye maybe if you look at bigger history. But I believe we're in a catalytic time and COVID forced us to into this time. If you think about it, every single person on this planet is inf influenced by this. The government needs to rethink on, on how they deal with this stuff. That has not happened before. So this, this is really an opportunity for a planetary shift, which if you look at evolution and if you believe astrologers, we are, we are headed towards to this big change from, from the Earth age to the Aquarian age, which people have been singing about in the 60s. Right? <laughs> I'm, a little, I'm a little hesitant with these things, but I, I do a huge transformation that will be happening actually on the 21st apparently 21st of december but it's not going to happen like this. it's going to take many years so what i i see happening is that this uncertainty this um breaking down all of these things that we know will continue for the next five ten ten years there's going to be an enormous amount of change in digital realm so that's um, I believe our phones will probably become more correct than our doctors because we can have human, human, the human physique now. There's so much data and so much capability out there. So what we as humans need to do is to be able to be absolutely flexible with what's happening, which means not to be rigid anymore, not to hold on to all things. 
And I believe that many of the things will be thrown in our face. It's not going to stop. It's going to be back in a year and two years and three years and five years. We might lose our jobs. We might need to find something else because the change that we are headed towards is so profound and so quick. So in my personal perspective, the most important thing that we need to build for ourselves is our own sovereignty. Mm. That's what, what you have said to say, what's really for me? What, who am I in all of this? Um, and what's my authenticity? What's my courage? What is my truth about this? Not ego influence, but what's really my core truth and how can I show up with that as a sovereign person? And how can I create a community and connect with people in that, in that truth and in that sovereignty? I think that's what's being asked of us and it takes an enormous amount of courage and insight and, and brilliance, I believe. And tools, what tools do you use to, or do you recommend to the people you work with to, to come center, to come to True North and to, to align with that? Yeah, um, I think discipline and resilience <laughs> are two big ones. Oh, that's hard. <laughs> I'm sorry that's about that. Hard. <laughs> resilience, okay, resilience. Discipline. <laughs> Oops, I'm getting fuzzy here. Maybe, maybe the you system didn't like it. <laughs> yeah. With resilience, I mean, uh, to know when we, to be mindful when we react from our emotions and fears. Yeah, and not to fall into the trough um, all the time and op operate from fear or fantasy and, and cause havoc out there with our fears. But to be really mindful and own our fears, we have fears, but to, to be in them and maybe make decisions from them, be mindful about that. So the resilience to be neutral and the discipline to come back and, and into neutrality and say, you know what, I'm totally out of power right now. I'm, I'm fear based. I just need to speak it out and don't take me seriously. <laughs> right. Um, Do you think a lot of people are fear based right now? Yes. 99.100%. I mean, we all have fears as human beings. I mean, let's face it. So yeah. <laughs> I believe this is a classroom for overcoming fear this entire life. So isn't it? Yeah, somebody had said, and I don't know where it was that I heard it that said the one first thing you can do is to turn off the news because it's equivalent to drinking poison, which I thought was profound because it does kind of get that fear going as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah, fear sells. So, so the news is definitely predicated to staring fear and staring crisis. However, um, I believe it's we need to stay informed. If if we are just checking out and living on a little ranch and say everything's okay, there this time is too crucial to check out. Hmm. It's too crucial to check out. So the, the the challenge really is for me to to, to stay informed and get reliable media wherever that's from. I have no idea these days. Um, to get reliable information and be able to stand in the fire without being pushed away from it. And how do you... So that I can... Go ahead. Right? Yeah, how do you... you you're asking I was going to say, that. how do you discern? How do you... I mean, do you just um, feel your way through with the discernment? Because we're really being bombarded by a lot of different information. One of the things that has frustrated me so much is not having access to the truth if there is one truth here there's so much information going around and how do you discern what's what's true and what's not or do you not it's and i try but it's a hard time because i mean we, nobody knows what's true anymore these days you know you can have an argument for this or you can have an argument for that there's no truth anymore so what, what I try to do is just read things and maybe it's read things that are completely right wing, maybe leads things that are completely left wing, knowing that they're manipulative to get a more complete picture and then find my own truth in that and sit with it. Hmm. It's, it's it ultimately, I think, as, as you said earlier, to sit with yourself and then you, does it resonate true for you? Does it really sit and does it feel, does it resonate true for you? Or is it just igniting some anger or some fear? Or, I want to be right or yes, I knew it, which is never the truth. And that kind of dovetails into, I, I know I've spoken about this at class where you become, your heart becomes the CEO 
so that you can kind of quiet your mind enough to, to, to relax all the, 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 the thoughts, the chaos in your head and what's coming at us to see what, what is the heart saying? Cause I found in my own life that your heart, um, normally is the wiser of the two um in terms of because you can feel it right you can feel the the mm -hmm. when you when you resonate with something you can feel whether it's true or not which is what you were saying yeah yeah i, I love that you bring that up because you know the biggest journey on the world is from here to here from from the head to the heart <laughs> those half of half a meter ever but isn't that the age of Aquarius? Isn't that yeah. where we're kind of heading? Not to where be, and, and not frou-frou. It, 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 and I don't think it's frou-frou. I think that, you know, we're not um, an advanced civilization by any means compared to the Mayans or to what has been in the past. We have, you know, you had talked about it before. There's, there's you know, what, 2 billion people in adjunct poverty right now. There's people that have no electricity. There's you know, there's somebody that dies from suicide. I was reading one every four seconds just in the United States. And that, this is something that our hearts can't, it can't resonate with. We have to align with a soul truth where we're all kind of, and, and it is again, like what you said, it's a product of living in a world that, that can't be sustained. It can't be sustained. So yeah. I love that you are, you are basically the corporate world's bridge. Are you not? <laughs> That's you're the bridge. You're the bridge from helping people un, unravel the corporate mindset into a more heart-led, conscious, um, purpose-driven and impactful way of not only making money and having abundance, but also creating an impact in the world and in the community and in our own individual lives, right? Yeah. Yes, exactly. And I want, I want to even take it a, a level further because we've pretty much got the head down. I mean, we know how to run businesses. We've been doing pretty clever stuff. But, and, and the, the heart sometimes lead a heartfelt business sounds a little woofy, but it's, it's absolutely far from it. If you look at the mind, the mind is not able to just be in the presence of conflict or fear or something. It's not able to be that. We always come up with stories. We want to manipulate. We want to make it better. We can't just be with something in our mind. We're not able in our minds to be present with, with what's going on. That's why we're creating so much havoc. The heart is an organ. If you look at that, if you're heart-centered, if you're in your heart, it has been the model for flow for billions of years so the heart knows flow the nose knows how to deal with emotions the heart is able to stand in the fire with absolute conflict adversity pain all those kind of things and it just can be present with that yeah. so if we are heart centered it's, it's not a woofy thing it's really the it gives us the ability to be present with really what is and come to empowered decisions and not decisions that are made in our monkey minds based on stories, based on a distorted reality. Yeah, so I'll give you an example. If uh, Did you have anybody die in your family that you were close to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my grandmother. Yeah. So you can, your mind is always creating a story. Oh my God, she was this and she's gone and how horrible and, and I could have done this and she's now not there anymore. The, the story in the mind will continue and it will continue un until the day you die. Right? It's not going away. It's, it's, it can grow over time. If you're just sitting in the presence of deep sadness, of, of loss, without the story around it, um, there's a deep sense of peace that you can probably feel in that sadness, a richness of experience, and it's a richness in which we could totally connect with each other. So it, it brings life back into the room and blah, blah, blah. Hmm. Does it make sense? It does make sense, but I just wonder um, for people who are new to this, how mm -hmm. do they how do they take the first steps to going from a whole life? Because there's momentum. It's like a train going down a track. They've lived their whole life in this world and they realize 
and I'm just saying for an example, they realize they're unhappy, they understand the concept of what we're talking about. But how do they, other than just call you and get their business involved with you, um, how do they bridge that? How do they, how, because it's a practice, right? I mean, there's tools like meditation and, you know, whatever, but how do you tell someone, okay, you're here at point A and you want to get to point B, what's the road? Or are there many? Uh, there are probably many roads, but but the first thing I would recommend is whenever you're frustrated with something, whenever you're dissatisfied or feel burnt out or some, something, then something is called, take it as a call. Uh, you might think, oh my God, my boss sucks. And it's a sign that the way we conduct business is not working and, and trust your intuition in that. Trust that there is something calling you, which is your authenticity. It's your authenticity calling you back to who you really are. And I just, yesterday I was giving a webinar and there was one lady from, from Germany and she said, you know, I feel so alone. This is so wonderful to be in, be in this energy, but I can't find this here in Munich. Um, so trust that you're on your path and that, that what, whatever frustration is there is, is okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pointing you somewhere. Follow that, those breadcrumbs. Yeah, pick up the phone to somebody that, that can understand that, right? <laughs> Listen to these kind of things. Um, the second thing is give it space. Yeah, so whether it's through meditation, whether it's through books, whether it's through movies, whether it's through conversations that you have, give that space, not in a way that you bitch and moan about it, this doesn't work, but what is it that you want to create? Give it, give it space where it can breathe where this, this little plant that wants to grow can breathe. And I often, I meditate every day, uh, go consciously into a different space where there's this spaciousness. Um, I go to your class, which always, yeehaw, <laughs> let's leave me completely free. I mean, that's, that's the thing. It, everything falls behind in your class and you're just fully there and be free. That's the magic of it for me. For me too. Yeah, so, um, make that space and give it give it space right and that's, i think that to me the there's step. no better time than now for people to to do that you've done and i and i don't want to take your entire morning but i just want to talk really briefly you've done a lot of online stuff do you have um programs that people can reach out to you how do people find you yeah, it, it depends where, where they're at. If we do individual coachings, we have a whole coaching team that teaches our methodologies. And again, when I was, maybe I'll give a little bit of the background. When I was sitting in Munich myself in my office, looking down the Grand Chaussee there, I said, you know what, we need to find a different way. And I could not find a curriculum that got me from point A, where I was in the business world to where I wanted to go. Yeah. I could do yoga retreats, I could drive to Sri Lanka and do an Ayurvedic retreat, but I would go back to Monday morning into the same rubbish. Yeah. I did not find a curriculum that would really help me transform in a systematic way. So that's, that's basically what we created for individuals in the work world, for leaders who want to run companies in a different way or for whole organizations. So we do that through different methods, through coachings, uh, through entire programs, or if you want to do it in a self-guided way, we have a bunch of online programs that people can take about the self, about relating to others, about purpose, those kind of things on our website. So, And I've taken a couple of your classes already, and they're genius and transformative. And uh, for me, really reflected how to... Um, what your your genius and you have quite a few geniuses about you but one of your geniuses is you're so articulate um in expressing things that are not easy to express and in mm -hmm. defining and helping with a visual uh, and and a and a step-by-step -step way to articulate how to go about connecting and and moving forward. And I absolutely love how not only relatable you are on your courses, but on how it's it's so beautifully articulated and clearly your whole life too, working in corporate, working in IT, all of this has led you to this because your gifts are numerous, right? In 
and and also being approachable and being someone that you know you never get tired of listening to you peter because you're so there's so much depth um to what you're saying and i could literally sit here and keep going and going but which we will have over a bottle of wine when you and rosie come <laughs> over but um yeah so one last question, or did you want to add anything else before I ask you the big the big question? Yeah, yeah, maybe one thing to add because it might help uh, people. Um, I was looking for my gift for a long time, but we all we all what we call have a personal magic, which I'm expressing, and this is what I've structured my entire work around it, and this is why it's working because I'm expressing my magic, <laughs> right. which I can do at eleven o'clock at night without being work. Uh, I had that through uh, given to me by uh, by one of our partners who's a who's a channel. Yeah, she was channeling information. He said, "Peter, what you are an illumination magic, what we call in our system here." I'm sorry, our an illumination. Illumination magic. That's yeah. my magic, which is the power to see the truth and convey it to people in a way that it creates insight. So yeah. True. So so what I do morning till night, it's not work for me is to understand human behavior and to put it out into words that people okay oh that that changes things for me so it's it and we all the message that i want to leave is that we all have a certain personal magic that if expressed um it puts us in the flow of life because we can express that as i mentioned at 11 o'clock at night without being work for us so maybe that helps people to look into what is what we do naturally. I have to just add that one of my biggest inspirations is my husband, because when I met him, I was working at a law firm. I'm a, I was a research paralegal making tons of money, working 16 hour days. And I remember he would, and he still does, um, watching him leap out of bed at five o'clock in the morning, so excited. Like he just was blissful every single day. And I'd be like, what is wrong with you? He goes, oh, I just got to get to the barn. I can't wait to ride this person, this and that. Yeah. And he chose a life that made him happy. And he said that in Argentina, yeah. his father had always said, please just find what, what makes you happy because um, we, we'll be able to provide for you. Don't worry about that. Just live a life that makes you feel fulfilled and happy. And he tried a bunch of different things. You know, he tried, he, he loves renewable energy, but it wasn't, he wasn't going to be able to send, sell, sell, sell wind turbines forever, but he's very, you know, intrigued by it. But the horses and what he does with horses is his magic. And he has never, and he'll say it, he's never worked a day in his life since he started playing polo and riding horses. And it was my inspiration to finally quit my job and, and jump off the cliff and find out what I was here to do. So yeah, we're all being called to it, I think, for sure. All right, Peter, so if you had a moment with the entire world listening to you, what would you tell them? Oh my God. <laughs> The big question. That's the big question. Um, How, what would you want to share with the world? You have the attention of everybody. Be, be yourself courageously. It, I know it sounds cliche and it's, it sounds superficial, but below that is just the, the biggest thing that we can be as human beings is being Okay. And most of us have never been seen in our lives before. And when we give other that gift or when we know this is who I am, this is my authenticity here, which most of us have never been asked to discover, who am I really here to be? If we can express that, it's just magic happening. It's just sparks flying. And so fearlessly to be who we are here to be is... As, as plain as it sounds <laughs> would be my message <laughs> that's the best message ever because then it empowers everyone that they don't need to be like everybody else they don't need to yeah. get gucci bag so that they look like everybody else they don't need to to kind of participate in what everybody else is doing that they can just show up as themselves and just in that act of being is part of the illumination and part of what the world needs right now. Yeah. And you see it in your husband. If, if we do that, then there is a sense of flow. 
Yeah. My husband. <laughs> so funny. It's so <laughs> funny. I've been I was been speaking with Shaman John, as you know, and Shaman John said the other day, well, you know, the truly enlightened beings like your husband. And I looked at him and I said, how do you what? figure my husband is a truly enlightened being? And we look over and Sebastian's drinking a beer and he's got a cigarette in one hand and he's drinking a beer. He's like, that's it, I'm enlightened. And I'm like, how is this even possible? <laughs> but um, I'm working should, my day off. I should, I should interview Sebastian, that's what I should do. No, <laughs> see what, that would be a <laughs> funny interview. Um, this conversation is, so beautiful and so along the lines of what I want to continue having this conversation about. And I'm so grateful that you joined me and that we had this and I can't wait to continue the conversation and um, in, in more ways and in more depth. So I hope that you will, you and I can talk even more um, at another time, but I'm just so grateful that you joined me and I love you. And I know that you, people don't know this, but Peter and Rosie and Sebastian and I have been very good friends for a long time. And I'm, I'm just so grateful for your friendship. And I feel very lucky to have such a in genius and a magical person as you in our life. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. Thanks so much to that. I can only reach out on that. Thanks. Thank you.